Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Unity of Love and Understanding, our Sunday gathering. It's a, a circle of love with all of you involved here. So as always, what we like to do is begin with a prayer. So I invite you to turn within with me. And let's touch that secret, sacred pace of the Most High that's deep within our very being. Let's feel and sense the touch of the divine. No matter what's happened in our life, no matter what is happening in our life, the assurance that we always have is that the love of God is always there. It's always available. It's our strength. It's our salvation. It is the guidance that's within us that provides the impetus for us to be able to live a wonderful and joy-filled life. So we open to it. We allow the divine to have itself as us, as our very life and breath. And by doing so, we bless everyone around us. So we bless this service. We bless each other and all those who watch us in any shape and form. And just know that the spirit and the power and the love of God that's everywhere is with you in this very moment right now. Thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. Brother Ed, you want to give us a congregational song? In my mind God is there In my God is there in my world. God is. and a prayer thank you thank you brother Ed well first of all let me say happy Palm Sunday and uh, I'd like to do a reading from uh, a book that I, I've, I've used to actually when I was studying for my Unity uh, a ministerial program. It's called from a, it's from a, a spiritual interpretation of Christian scriptures, the Gospels by Unity School of Religious Studies. Metaphysically interpreted, Jesus' journey from Galilee to Jerusalem may be seen as a symbol of the journey that we also must undertake, from sense or mortal consciousness to spiritual consciousness. Palm Sunday. This is the prelude to what Christians consider the most important Sunday that's upcoming, which is Easter Sunday, the day of resurrection. But when you look back at the life of this man, Jesus of Nazareth, he had a lot of ups and downs. As a child, he wasn't taken as this, this prodigy that he was. He was just another child. 
as he grew up, he went through the typical challenges that all of us do, including the challenge of, of getting to know who we are and to understand that there are multiple components of who we are. And that one of those components is that mortal or, or human sense of what we do. And that's our ego. Before he even started his ministry, what he did was to go out by himself into the desert and approach that. Understand that and try to take all of his experiences to that point and to release that ego. Now, I know a number of people that are on here think that, you know, the ego is a good thing. It, it, it provides a, uh, a way of us understanding what we should and shouldn't do in a physical sense and gives us some insights and, you know, helps us get motivated. But in the sense of ego versus spiritual, there needs to be a spiritual founding. There needs to be a spiritual direction for everything we do that guides the ego rather than the ego guiding the spirit. Okay, what do I mean by that? It means that we don't let our desire for relationships or money or, or success be our driving force. Our driving force needs to come from the spiritual direction of what is best for everyone around us, for ourselves, and how can we use the gifts that we've been blessed with to lift other people up, not to tear them down, not to get from other people, but to, in essence, give to other people. And to allow those gifts that we have to be utilized to their highest and best. Whatever they may be, because every one of you, every one of us has different gifts, just like Jesus had different gifts. His was a spiritual message. His was a message of, you've been told what you can and cannot do with the law. Here is, here is your commandments. And in Leviticus, there's a lot more than the Ten Commandments. There's all of these requirements that you had to do. Jesus understood them. But what he looked at was all the things, instead of from the physical sense of what to do, what do I do for my spirit? How do I live from my spirit? And the way that he looked at that was to live with the energy of love being at the forefront of every thought, word, and action. That's, that's not easy, especially when we run across challenges, when we run across things in our life that hurt us that have caused us pain, that have caused us challenges, that have made you know, terrible impressions on us, that have, have created wounds inside of us. His answer will had been and will always be, give it love, give it positivity, give it upliftment. Don't tear others apart because you're hurting. This was what Jesus learned along the way. He came and he said, I am here not to destroy the law. I come to fulfill the law. Now, obviously, they didn't have social media in the time of Jesus. But what he did on Easter Sunday was similar to him making a TikTok video. 
because he wanted to show everyone in pictorial form what he was all about what his entire ministry was about that's what easter sunday was about it was about showing everyone that he had come to fulfill the law everyone was looking for this hero who would ride on horseback which symbolized war who would free the hebrew people and the nation of uh, of, of of the hebrews and be able to save them just like david did and jesus is saying that's not what i was here to do and what i was here to do was foreseen long before i got here let me read you a piece from zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. I want you to listen to this because this is the pictorial of what Jesus tried to accomplish when he came from Galilee to Jerusalem on the colt of a, of a donkey. Here we go. Now, Zechariah was like... Um, 150 BC or 900, um, 900 BC, 950 BC. Here's the words. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, even a, a colt of the fowl the, of an ass. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace unto the nations and his dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. That was a long time before Jesus got there. Jesus was trying to say, I fulfill that. My whole ministry is not about a battle and saving you with war like David did. I come here and use love and peace to be the example for everyone to follow. When he came to close to the town, close to Jerusalem, and told his disciples to go into this town, this small town, and they will find an ass and the colt of an ass, and to bring them both to him. And the, the disciples said, well, what happens if somebody says, you know, what are you doing? He says, well, you tell them that your master told you to get them. And the people will say it's okay. And that's exactly what happened. People said, well, what are, you, what are you taking these for? And he says, well, my master said that we needed to take. And the person looked at them and said, you can take them. Now, let me tell you the significance of this ride. The cult of an ass is the, is the, the baby. This is one that has never been tamed. It's never been put a bridle on. It's, it's never been ridden by anyone. If you have ever seen a donkey, you know that they are some of the pretty ornery creatures. They kick you off. They, they'll do all sorts of stuff. The fact that Jesus never put a bridle on this donkey but sat on him and had this donkey just walk down the road quietly, symbolize the fact that he was able to take his own personal power 
and bring peace. He brought peace to a donkey that was untamed to walk all of those miles with him, riding him on his back without being even disturbed, never mind thrown off. That is as big a miracle as some of the other things that Jesus did. But nobody even thinks about that. He did this so symbolically so that people would get a picture of exactly what his ministry was about. It was about peace. It was about learning to love. It was about learning compassion and understanding. And it didn't matter what had happened along the way. His ministry was about how to harness that strength in a very loving and peaceful way. Now, think about what happened along the way. All of these people were praising him, Hosanna in the highest. They took palms and they laid palms in front of the donkey. He walked, this thing walked along. They were shouting, they were going crazy. They loved him. I want you to understand that some of those same people that Thursday night were the same people were asking for him to be crucified on the cross. Wow. That's pretty amazing. But what is that telling you? It's telling you that you can trust in people. You can't lay your beliefs in them to do, to be, or anything like that. It even tells you that things that have happened to us in our past, as we were children, as we were growing up, all the, the things that may have befallen us, it's not about us looking back and reliving that. It's not about remembering that. It's about recognizing it and moving on and learning to focus my attention onto what is true and real. What is the spiritual aspect? What is the divine guidance? What is the love? What is the peace? What is the joy? What is the thing that I should be focused on rather than the pain? Rather than the exaltation? Rather than people? I need to focus on the spirit of God within me and that guidance. When he arrived in Jerusalem, all of these people had been lined up and, the, and, and all the authorities, all the Jewish authorities were around and they just turned their backs on him and walked away and didn't even recognize that this man even lived. They didn't care because he didn't support them. He didn't, he did not support all the rules and regulations that they had created, all the dogma. He supported what the Spirit of God had put inside of all of us to love and respect God and everything God created and to love your neighbor as yourself. And those were the only two things required to live a good Jewish life. Wow. He was trying to say, that's the only thing you need to live life, period. That eliminates all of those authorities that are making money off of everybody else that are being lifted up in, in status because of who they are in the Jewish religion. 
they didn't recognize him. But he knew full well that it was those people and some of the ones that were in the crowd they were going to call for his own death because he was a revolutionary. He was saying, you don't need to do all this. You don't need to kiss everybody's butt to get to where you're supposed to be. You need to follow the divine inspiration of Spirit God Almighty that's inside of you. It's not the people that will lift you up. It's the direction of God that will. That's where you need to live, move, and have your being from and be the example of. That's what he was the example of. That's why when he came into town, he fulfilled what was written. He fulfilled it. He gave everyone a picture of it. It was like him, them taking that TikTok video so that people could replay it in their minds. Ah, he is the Messiah. Well, they didn't want a Messiah. The, the, the Hebrew authorities didn't want a Messiah to come in because it would disrupt their authority. He was a danger because he shook the authorities up. He made the things simpler. He wasn't doing it for himself. He wasn't doing it for his own personal upliftment, his own personal gains. He was doing it for everybody else. He was doing it as an example so that other people didn't have to be, have the, the authorities put their hands on them and push them down into the ground and, and tax them and make sure that they supported them. He said, we're all free. We're all equal. Who is your neighbor? Everyone and anyone. Even those who don't like you. That's your neighbor too. So this Palm Sunday, I want you to think about the picture that Jesus created and what was going through his mind, how he went from that physical idea of his ego all the way to this spiritual aspect, knowing full well that all these people who threw kisses at him and laid down palms and said he was so wonderful, we're going to be the same people that want him crucified. How in his mind, he knew all that was happening. And he blessed them all. Every single one. To the day that he was dying on the cross. In that evening, he looking down at all these people who had been laying palms down in front of him. And said, you know, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. Bless them. And that's where we need to be. We need to grow from sense consciousness, from the pains that we've had. We need to grow into a space of peace and love and joy. That's what I teach. That's what I teach everybody. Not, not to recognize the, the challenges that we have, but to focus on what the end result we want. And that end result is always something higher, greater, and more loving. Something that utilizes your highest gifts. And from there, the world is possible. Because there is a peace that occurs that passes anything that we've ever known. It passes our human understanding. Because it's the peace of God. Not in God. Not in man. Not in money. 
It's the peace of the divine. It's the energy within you. So let's get still. Let's know that anything that's happened to this point in time in our life has been an opportunity for us to learn and to grow. Everything. The good, the bad, and the ugly. We call nothing good and bad. We bless everything. Because every one of us has had a different individual journey. And that journey has been designed specifically for each one of us individually. From our parents and siblings, to our education, to our struggles, to our ups and downs and everything in between. It's been designed so that we have an opportunity to learn and to grow and to, to transform whatever hurt us into what's healing us. And that same healing radiates for others to feel and sense and possibly share with. But it's first and foremost for our transformation. Because as Jesus said, as I am lifted up, I lift others up, lift, up, lift others with me. We do it all the time. But you can also bring them down all the time too. What do you do? Where do you become the example? What example do you follow? And have you healed your pain? With my faith, I heal. I trust that everything to this point is providing the impetus for me to shift, to rise up, to transform. And that faith heals me. I trust in the divine. I'm grateful for all of those things that occurred so that I could be the person that I am right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, life. And so it is. Amen. Brother Ed, I know you got something for us today. This 
And in on me, I'm down at the crossroads wondering what's it gonna be. All I see is infinity in the restless soul and the open mind. All along the vanishing horizon line, all I see is infinity. of compassion infinity of redemption infinity of revelation all I see is infinity all I see all I see all I see all I see all is infinity thank you brother Ed well this is our conscious sharing time I'm gonna put up the donation information you can you can contribute to us in numerous ways you can go online to our, uh, our website you can do venmo you can do zelle you can send us a check whatever it is you'd like to do but the most important thing is whatever you do imbue the gift of love the energy of love bless it release it let it go and know that it always returns to you multiplied so just put your hand on your heart just to symbolize where this gift is coming from. It's flowing from this space of love that is symbolized by your heart outward and it's touching the entire world. So we bless the gift and the giver and just know that all is in divine order here. Thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. Let me... Uh, up the prayer of protection here. As J. 
James Dillard Friedman's Prayer of Protection. Let's read this together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Amen. I want to say thank you for joining us today. This is a special Palm Sunday. Uh, so we appreciate you. But if you're seeing this online, if you're watching this on YouTube, please join us anytime. What's happening is that this is not the end of the service. At the end, all the people who are on here get an opportunity to share with one another. We share, we support each other. You know, we, we spread that love. So if you'd like to join us, go to the website that was just on the screen, unityofloveandyou.org, and there'll be the topic, and there'll be a Zoom link. At 9.50 a.m. Pacific time, click that link, come into service, you'll be, you'll be let in. Be part of our meditation, it's a 10-minute meditation, and then we start the service immediately following we, we want to hear what you have to say. That's how we all learn. We learn from each other. So please do that. So let me, let's uh, finish off with a prayer, okay? I want to include uh, one of our congregants, uh, Sharon Smith. Her boyfriend, uh, Lamar, a couple of weeks ago, his father made his passing, and this past week, his sister made her passing. So there's a lot of sadness, and there's a lot of a lot of pain going on right now in that family. They're they're all back in Detroit. That's why she's not on the line right now. So I'd like to hold all of them in prayer, and I'd like you to hold them too, to bless Lamar and his family and Sharon to know that Lamar's father and his and Lamar's sister are, are blessed moving from this space of glory to the next. And that all of us who are left behind, we simply bless their journey, bless each other and support each other. And let's support everyone here. Everyone who has a need or a prayer in their heart or requirement, hold it, hold it in your heart, in your heart right now. And let's bless it. Let's embrace it. Let's know that the spirit and the wisdom and the power of the divine is simply transforming whatever our need is into our next glory. It's transforming things rather than changing. It's allowing us to transcend any pain or any hurt or any need and to move into that space of fulfillment right now. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, life. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for being part of this service. Happy Palm Sunday, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Blessings.